in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video this as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is when you see forth, that we keep you. singing like the this are going to be it's because the holy spirit you. is and then doing God is going to visit you all. Thank you for watching. Whenever he stands, you you hook on to what he's doing and you don't rest. Please help me sound. Just a song that I heard in my spirit now. Say who me? Share with no man. 
I share my glory with no man. This honor no man takes to himself. I will do a walk in your midst, say the Spirit of the Lord. And it will be swift. It will be swift. I will do a walk in you. And it will be swift. I will make you the tabernacle of my glory, say the Spirit of the Lord. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you, say the Spirit of the Lord. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you. Through the ashes and through the pain, I bring upon you new mantles. I bring upon you new graces. prophecy is falling on people right now right now right now I see it like like a cloth like a garment is a spiritual garment is falling on people right now the spirit of prophecy yeah. 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 even outside I see it like a garment falling on people yeah. of prophecy yeah. is like a garment men and women are wearing that garment right now yeah. prophetic word to the worship team new songs from heaven say the spirit of God new songs upon our worship team new songs upon our worship team is coming like mantles upon your spirit it's like radio waves into your spirit man worship team radio waves you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit. Songs in the spirit. You will hear them in the night time as you sleep. You will hear them in the morning. You will hear the voice of angels. They will sing those songs. And you will pick those signals. They are songs of new seasons. They are melodies of victory. They are songs of triumph. They are songs that speak the language of victory. They are songs that empower the saints. They open them to new dimensions in the spirit. 
They are songs of the Lamb. They are songs of the Lion. They are songs from heaven. They are sounds of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. says I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead the Lord says I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead beyond the shadows are new realms of victory beyond the pain are new dimensions of trial beyond the shadows are new levels of grace for you will sing this song in the days to come say the spirit of the Lord they are sounds of victory only the victorious can sing this song they are melodies of triumph they are melodies of victory say the spirit of the lord yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the Lord says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old weep not for I bring you new joy say the spirit of the Lord I bring to an end your season of weeping I bring to an end your season of weeping you may not know how it will happen but I will move by my wisdom say the spirit of the Lord you do not need to know how it will happen for it will be swift and it will be strange say the spirit of the Lord you may not know how it will happen, but it will be a move of the spirit. And like the twinkling of an eye, I will put a melody upon your lips. A song of victory. A song of victory. A song of victory. Yeah. say unto you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old forget about the pain of the past for the glory that is before you is greater than the pain of the past it has been a season of birthing say the spirit of the lord have i not said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son you have been in a season of birthing the pains are for a reason the pains are building strength in you to contend with the seasons of glory that are ahead. Weep not, my child, say the Spirit of the Lord. Weep not, for the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more in your destiny. For the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more. Yeah. 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 Rejoice for your salvation, draw it nigh. Say in the Spirit of the Lord, Rejoice for your salvation, draw it nigh. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it nigh. I say again, it will be swift. It will be swift. Like the twinkling of an eye. It will be swift. Yeah.
those songs rise from your spirit. Go ahead. Make those melodies to him in the spirit. Let the melodies rise. It's an incense of worship. It's an incense of worship. Hallelujah. I see the angels of the Lord. Chariots. Fighting battles. This is what I see in the realm of the spirit. I see battles. Contentions. I see a mighty warfare going on in the realm of the spirit. A warfare for the new levels. I see the arsenals of hell being torn down. And I hear the saying with tears in their eyes shouting the song of the Lamb and the song of victory just keep soaking in the glory there is warfare going in the realm of the spirit don't think you are wasting your time. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. a little further just press a little further don't be tired Worship his majesty. We'll Sing it. The nations will worship.
It's unto you, O oh God. It's unto you. Let this rise as an incense of worship. mighty presence of God in this place there is a strong manifestation of the spirit of prophecy many of you will begin to prophesy 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 it's a strong unction of the spirit it's not the programming of the flesh it's by the strength of the spirit yourself that all you get in God's presence is just the word worship teaching then you share the grace you must always come into God's presence expecting him to move in any way and to do anything believe me you may not know the kinds of activations that are happening to people right now in this place see Church is not designed just to be a place where you come and sit down and watch people and laugh. There are times that all you need is to come and press into an encounter. That you step out of that meeting and all of a sudden your sensitivity, something has happened. All of a sudden you find out that the burdens are lifted. All of a sudden you find out that the chains are broken. All of a sudden you find out that the power that comes from the throne does something to your life. This is what his presence does. See? That all of a sudden in that atmosphere when the spirit of prophecy the Bible says the testimony of Jesus every time the true spirit of prophecy comes into a place all of a sudden the spirit of God meeting the needs of people touching people challenging people opening them up explaining to you your encounters of the secret place showing you why the things that happen happen giving meaning to your encounters this is the only way church will not be boring yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Listen, all I'm seeing in the spirit is light, light falling on people. That's all I'm seeing. It's an illumination, strong impartation of light. That's what is happening all over the building. God is opening the eyes of men, giving explanations. For some of you, the light that is coming is direction. Strange direction by the Spirit. Yeah. 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 
some of you this life that is coming is answered prayers that's the answer to prayers coming as that light from the throne tell you something many of us have robbed the holy spirit from finding expression some of these songs you see me coming bringing from the spirit many of us god has been wanting to pass through you but this rigidity we put there is there is a sense of religion i am busy trying to make money trying to read books trying to be successful we our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get this sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit. When you are busy around. Trying to combine spirituality. And many other things. The presence of God is a full time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. Listen. For when he comes he comes with light for when he comes he comes with ease for when he comes he comes with illumination many of you have been praying oh lord take me to a new level it's not just by prayer stay in the presence stay in the glory that's the key that's the secret it's not just moving around no the glory doesn't just fall overnight when you stay your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit that's how it works it's not a hit and run thing you just rush and come out and then you want to hear with accuracy then you want his glory to flow it doesn't work like that there is a there is a staying there is a staying i tell you it's a law you must stay the church has learned to hurry god and we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives. There are many of you here, listen. When you started out with God, you had the time and the staying power. But I don't know what it is that has happened. God is challenging us. That secret place is now a strange place for many of us. We are busy doing ministry. We are busy trying to make a living. We are busy trying to move around. The church has lost the art of the secret place. The secret place is not a place, it's a place where you stay like a waiter. Stay until his glory comes. And then when his glory comes, there is a signature upon your life. Undeniable. The secret place is the place of power. The secret place is the place where you have a message if god does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains i like you to pray and say lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory i have tasted of your glory 
I have seen what your grace can do but Lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations the spirit of prophecy is strong in this place night Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. 
Stop. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around it in church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process or we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of god move around brother there is a price it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender it's a reward for total yieldedness i used to hear benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the Spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the Spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture this thing. The, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? Yes. You're at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different, you are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. If that contact happens in 5 hours, you continue. See, it's not about religion. But it starts with a desperation, a desperation, a desire. The first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit, man. Get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them. Let those dreams come alive again. Because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny. A little here, a little there. Before the year runs out, we are going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm. To supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life. If you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, Believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. 
the spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence nothing in this world will satisfy oh jesus you're the cup that pulled you on dry nothing in this world will satisfy jesus you're the cup that pulled Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Sing it just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven. Is heaven to me. Is heaven to Your me. presence is heaven to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take... I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters, spiritual growth. Who give us an opportunity, maybe 30 minutes, and then I'll just minister to people. There are people who need to be ministered to. And so that's what we're going to do. Help us with another mic, please. Um, now I know that, please listen, many of us have questions especially as regards intimacy encounters our spiritual lives i'm trusting that god will grant grace we we'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it and please i want you to feel free make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth not just something that is a bias for some of us is something regards prayer your prayer life um, your word life if there's no mic, you can, I can take one and then you can use this. Hallelujah. And so, um, because it's not only important to teach. There are some of us who have encountered certain challenges, maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the Spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the Holy Spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth. And I'm trusting that God will grant us um, a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now in the name of Jesus Christ there's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place the power of God is coming upon her this is a spirit that has been tormenting her Lord, wherever that lady is right now, I declare deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. That lady is in the congregation here in the name of Jesus Christ. It's like fire that will come upon you. I judge that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree judgment. I pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression. Praise the Lord. So, we're going to have little q and a and i'll respond and maybe uh, on one or two occasions we can allow one or two people to respond the questions will bless many of us because it will answer it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives i don't want our spiritual lives to be 
um, without accuracy. Some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time. That's why we are not getting certain results spiritually. Hallelujah. Some of us may be pressing into God. For instance, there are people who press into God, but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding. Not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral, but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter. Every time you get to a dimension, it pulls you back. You are making progress, but the graph is not straight. It's like it goes up, forces you down. Then you have to pray and fast your way. There are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit. Like a gentleman who, uh, I think someone sent me a text. I don't know if he's here. He sent me a text in the afternoon. Um, and he said every time he's in the presence of God or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of God, he starts yawning mysteriously, like yawning. And um, some of you are already nodding in agreement. It's happening to me too. What is the meaning of that? <laughs> are you yawning out demons? Are you absorbing the glory? What exactly is happening? So, um, please be smart. Don't be rude to the protocol. People just walk as they direct you. We're going to have a few questions. Um, I will use the questions. Some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings. And I'll use the opportunity and just address things. Don't be biased. Make sure that you ask things that are relevant. If your question is not relevant to our meeting, we'll ignore it. Is that all right? Let's pray in one minute and say, Father, speak to me. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, we'll come in threes. We'll just have the first three. They will stand and then if there's any need so let me see by wave of hands i'll point people out okay number one you can stand up come second number two and then um let's have a lady figure all right that lady waving her hands in blue come quickly appreciate them as they come be smart tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seat let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead Good evening, sir. Is it working? Yes, sir. Um, good evening, sir. Thank you. Yes, Bless sir. you. Yes, sir. My question is um, about visions. Visions? Yes, sir. What, what are they? Visions. Okay. Yes, sir. What are they? And are visions a sign of spiritual growth? Okay. That's um, like spiritual visions. Are they limited to a particular set of people? People who do not have them as frequently. As, are they growing? Yes. Are they, is it a sign that they are growing? Okay. I, I want to. Visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters, right? Um, there are many levels, dimensions, and types of supernatural encounters. Visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit. It could be realities that reveal the past the present or the future you understand it could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings now the whole goal of visions and, and i want us to pay attention the whole goal of visions and encounters any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension are we together now so every time we talk of prophecy, it's not just speaking. Any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension. So in every man, there is a prophetic dimension. Let me call it a latent prophetic dimension. Now, those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office, the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office, you can work you should work in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office it heads and coordinates the spiritual activities are we together now but in a typical prophetic office by default the moment you there is an election of grace upon you inclined towards that prophetic office there are it's like spiritual configurations by default are we together now now, your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it. 
but anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet are, are we clear now so visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic and the goal of visions dreams is illumination and direction sometimes also impartation it gives you illumination access to light and information right sometimes it gives you direction but in many cases it also comes with impartation that's why some of us can have dreams have visions encounters we don't exactly know why they came but they leave residues of impartations as we get up and begin our normal life we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated and we may not know at what point it was activated like wisdom like certain virtues do you understand so now but that does not mean listen if you are truly growing spiritually right even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm if you are growing spiritually the the presence of god has a prophetic effect on everyone whether you're a prophet or not this is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the holy spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet but in reality he's not a prophet he's just one who has pressed into god to an appreciable dimension it's like an aura of god's presence now the bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually you will begin to um, get impulses it's called spiritual perception in fact i preached a message on that you can get it with the media after the service are we are we understanding now because there are some of us here who are praying we love god but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition what people like kenneth hagin will call the knowing of the spirit we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were and sometimes we get intimidated and i think i must correct that because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying um um Ogashew saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying oh i saw something and you you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um encounters you are awake you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of god or some kind of supernatural encounters it does not mean you are not growing spiritually are we together now there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the christ that's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth so if you are born again and there is no transformation in you you are not conforming to the image of christ believe me your salvation is questionable in fact let me let me press on this before we continue there are many people who think they are born again and and please i don't want you to doubt your salvation but i must be sincere with you there are many people who think they are born again and i tell you the truth by the lord they are not they are not saved the meaning of that is if they die today they are going to hell are we together now please don't don't trivialize salvation salvation is the is the supplanting of the very life of god in a mortal man are we together the bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed remember of the word of god so there is a seed the same way a man plants a seed in his wife what do you expect that seed to do there should be fertilization is that true and eventually as time progresses that seed right begins to produce so you cannot tell me you are born again listen that you are born again the life of christ is in you and you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom 
so that your degree of conformity to what degree do i see christ in you in fact paul puts it this way he said my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was talking to people who were already saved so conformity to the image of christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom these two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir so i want to know well, what's your name my name is oko sampotens okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, prayer life pray. for instance is your going down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level it, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is a, maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um, it's coming back or something. The devil wants to bring and it you back. Pray, uh, and you pray against it, let it not be, let it not be and Lord. Then it still and then it happens. Okay. Then you feel like it's man, it's gone. Then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not a habit is not proposed to lift you up spiritually. What you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um, it is part of the love of God. Now love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. There is a dimension of love called justice. Are we together? That's why Paul says to know the length, the breadth, and he, he gives love a dimension. So when we say the love of God comes to you, it can come as his goodness. It has, can come as his chastisement. Are we together? It can come as his mercy. Now you are a believer. Number one, we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down. Right? There are two reasons why your prayer life can go down. Number one, it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together according to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this i say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh right so it says the flesh lusted after the spirit the spirit after the flesh and there is a contention you get up in the morning i mean there are ladies to resist there is beer to cast away there, there are all kinds of things to happen there is bribery and corruption to run away from at the end of it after a while it's like it's like wear and tear your spirit can be fatigued that's not backsliding that's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit at that point the solution is a retreat isaiah 40 verse 31 even the young men can be weary they can faint all right then but they that wait upon the lord but in a situation where it is an attack which often happens there are three seasons where satan attacks people number one at the birthing of something new the moment there is something new about to happen in your life part of the many events that happen is a strange attack 
that has nothing to do with your spiritual life. You read the Bible and you find out it's not unusual. Right? Very, very important. There is always a strange attack. Revelations. I saw a mystery. A woman who was carrying a man-child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat. Now, Satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds. Any kind of seed. Spiritual seed. If he cannot stop it, he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience, taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary. Are we together now? And if he cannot stop it, then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest. These are the three seasons and stages of Satan's attack. So before you start ministry, look at that. He did it to Moses. Stage one, when Moses was about to be birthed and conceived, they wanted to kill all the people. So to abort the destiny from day one. Now that it did not happen, he wanted to implicate Moses and he caused Moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him, the process. And then eventually towards the end of his life, he used anger and stopped him from entering. So there are three stages of Satan's attack. Are we together? We see that even in the life of Jesus. Jesus about to be born, his star shines in the east. Wise men follow him, Herod wants to kill him. Are we together? Then later on again, we see that through the process, after his baptism, Satan comes to wait for him. And then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him, I'll give you the kingdom, bow down. And since he refused, and then he tried and tried and tried, all through the lifetime of Jesus, Satan could not get him. And then the last stage was in hell. When Jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out, all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow. And then he rose up and you know that when Jesus was about to resurrect, what happened? They paid some people to lie. Even when he resurrected, he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected, they paid some people, they said, go and lie. That the disciples came and stole his body. So we see that there are seasons. You can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks. Except you do not have spiritual intelligence. Now, Satan, I'm using this, are, are we getting blessed? Is God speaking to us? Satan is not omniscient. There are three attributes that make God sovereign. Number one is his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere. Satan is not everywhere. Job 1 verse 1. From whence comest thou? Later on you read, from running to and fro. God doesn't run to and fro. His eyes can see everything. The all-seeing eyes of God. Are we together now? Number two, his omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three his omnipotence his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now, Satan does not have these attributes. Are we together? So, Satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life. And that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities. Satan was once a cherub. And so, he understands. Remember when Jacob slept, right? When you read Genesis 28. When Jacob slept, he saw a ladder. There were unusual activities happening. Are we together now? The same thing Jesus told Nathaniel. In John chapter 1, he said, you will see many things. you see the heavens open and all of that. So what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what God is about to do. That's why when prophecy comes, that's not the time to cross your leg. Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare with the prophecies. Because prophecy is an announcement. It's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter-attack. At that point, 
if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace are you following me now and that's the power of a retreat isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 they that wait the moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit some of you will see it in dreams some of you will have it in visions some of you prophecies will come to you and many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy now prophecy must not be exalted above the word of god however it's important to many times pay attention to it especially when it's coming from vessels that know god and are credible it's important to pay attention praise the lord very very important so when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack if it prevails over you an attack is inevitable on the saints and it's not a surprising thing the surprise however is when satan prevails are we together now because even in heaven there was war the bible said there was war in heaven that that dragon lucifer he rose and archangel michael also rose and, but satan prevailed not there was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth and there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth you know satan that old serpent he has come with anger and great fury are we together now so if there is an attack an affliction the secret is prayer and it's in a secret place so if your prayer life died it's because you did not build momentum before that time are we together that's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call it's like a spiritual bank it's like an energy bank so your daily prayer the bible says redeeming the time that's the mystery there are two words that are used time in the greek there is chronos and there is kairos chronos is the passage of time kairos is an opportune time or a set time the bible uses these two words in the book of psalms it said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time chronos to favor her yea the kairos when you translate it to hebrew the set time are we together now so there is a set time an opportune time where major things happen between heaven there is serious business between you and heaven and at that time the devil knows and he will launch attacks so what you do is you build a spiritual fortification both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer so that at such time it will sustain you the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle what was wrong your strength your spiritual strength now is small so if you fell in that attack it's because your strength was small are we together let's assume let's use something maybe pornography are we together now and it's something god had delivered you from and you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography are we together now and then you fell to it that falling is not a test that falling is not the furnace of affliction we're talking about that you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through but then in the midst of it the dimension of god's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man i don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes sorry and uh, this is there are many people if yeah. you ask two two questions please if you come out after two questions you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question are we together yeah um, this has been happening i will see some things i won't i will not know how to inquire for the meaning and when it happens later sometimes they are not good at times it posi it's is positive you will what sorry see for instance you will see yeah, things yeah, visions yeah. Now. yes now like there was a time i saw myself traveling with a lady and when it came i didn't understand what it meant when it came traveling with a lady uh, to, a, a vision. to a place yes when it to came where? to a place i didn't know we were going okay, to a place okay no so location the, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place. I'm, uh, in and that, that oh, was you where held she, her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay. That's where she got her. This thing, but I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently, 
I saw a, a lady, my cosmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra- she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? She said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe if we, had, if we had prayed about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers? Okay, God bless you. Now, there are two things here that I will attempt to respond to. I, I don't know if we understand his question, but um, after this, we'll take three people from outside before we continue. So protocol help us. We'll get the three people from outside who have questions. Please, you see how time is going. If you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense, we have agreed as a congregation that we're sending you back. Please, we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time. Are we together? So please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually Three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch that I saw? What if it's a a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty? You can't just say, I saw a chain. It means I'm under attack. I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God. And when she got to that dimension, she, she, a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and said, you are walking in immorality. What kind of nonsense life is this? You are giving us an impression like you are serious with God. Now your secret has been revealed. And the lady was depressed and she came and met me. That, that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit. But it was wrongly interpreted. Three of us can see a finger in the spirit. For one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three three things. Three baskets, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days they will hang you. And this is established. And they hung him after three days. Are we together? So, stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations. You only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove, is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters but not just that you see you can see a woman in the spirit you can see yourself moving with a woman and you may think that god is punishing you from or lost a woman in the spirit is a gate that woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season are you seeing now but because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come and all of that so i think um for the gentleman i think i've been able to help him i i hope that i got his question correctly if i didn't i'm, I'm so sorry praise god yes my praise dear. god permit me to say this that first that is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time god bless you thank you <laughs> thank you i i'm very thank happy you. i'm here tonight You're my welcome. question is to bawashitku the first question is 
what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual growth? Today you are hope, tomorrow spiritual you are Spiritual growth. Uh, does but it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just... Question two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it's really caused a big advoc in my lodge. Look then. at the congregation. Okay. It's, it's really caused a big advoc in my lodge. I'm asking the question that... He had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That has, Does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was, sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost, um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? Up, up and down. Okay, okay. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does the Bible say? The path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding i think i've, I've cleared i've cleared that all right for as long as you are wearing this body the limitations of carrying up mortality right the concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible but immortality is not an impartation immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit because the bible says as we behold him we are changed now the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast that's why we die are we together now but it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension enoch did it elijah did it so we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that, but at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus. And yet, the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden i sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I'll use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires, obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press through that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. 
are, are we together now? For the, our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him. Um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have when we live in Christian communities. Because people wake up with all kinds of things. I spoke to you about interpretation. This brother may be a sincere person. Maybe he's here. We are not creating fight. Are, are we together? You don't know whether he followed you. For Koinonia. You said he's in your lodge. Now, the point is this. It is wrong. You see, prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation. Are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, Is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So um it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me, maybe with a stick in a dream. Are we together now? And all of a sudden, I wake up and I say, I saw Shalhoma chasing me. And it's welfare that cooks for me. I put two and two together and I say, my life is under, I'm in danger. I mean, and then I now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen i mean in the house of god there are all kinds of things but then i'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady if he does not understand seek counsel there are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together. You must let scripture interpret your encounters. Are we together now? I mean, in the Bible, women seduce men. What was the progression of the seduction? Samson was seduced. Are we together? Who again was seduced in the Bible? Huh? Job was not seduced. Who? Joseph was seduced. Some of you are saying Job. Look at how your poor but please how about this is koinonia don't we're well, bible people how, job was never seduced the only woman with him was his wife please don't go and say that anywhere it's very bad are, are we together now my dear so that 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 teaching even if it was true this is what i would have done if i had a dream and you pursue me or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream right even if it was your face it's wrong to get up and call you a witch do you know, because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing. You now get up and you now call her a witch. Three situations would help to interpret that. Number one, it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction. It can be true. Are we together? That you as a person, you are not bad, but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust. Or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face. Disturbing that person. Are we together now? And so you will feel bad. Number two. It can be the spirit of confusion. The devil masquerading. To now cause confusion. Are we together? So he will now use your face. Just like you saw your father quarreling you. You saw your mother caught beating you. You just got up and said your mother is a witch. Anybody, whether my father or my mother. The, the woman is innocent. You find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft. However, 80% of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of. You see that? So, um, whoever he called a witch, I can guarantee you is not a witch. Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYC. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually, 
or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is, it's been settled. You understand? So that's what you should do. God bless you and increase you. Eh? Okay, straight to the point. Um, we have, okay, let's have one or two more people. Two more people. Please, if you are sure your question is really going to bless us, we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that we waste our time. Are we together? The gentleman, uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. How are so you? a process whereby... Don't look at me. As you're saying it, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh... Lost of the flesh. Yes. Example, what is loss of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the presence of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the presence of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever. We've seen these kinds of cases. So, um, do you know what deliverance is? Deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here. Deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life. Are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience. Or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria. But are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord. Yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences. Right? They can, they, can, they can transcend generations. So this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich kenny is very rich promise is very rich you see that pattern there is a covenant that grant that access promise very poor kenny very poor michael struggling there is also a pattern so patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant so you find out that a father is an arm robber when he stole his son did not know Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who I, I, I think um, 
um, she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now, one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then, the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing. But there is the experience of establishing that victory. Are we together? Number two is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance grants access to demon spirits. They manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations. Then number three is disobedience. You know it, but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there. So these are the three access points. So if you find out that you are praying, praying, and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement, and it's repeating itself, you need help. That's the reason why God puts um, gifts to the body to be able to help, right? Remember our teaching for this course, many are weak, many are sick, and many do sleep. God has elected certain people in the body of Christ and created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things. That's why we organize miracle services. That's why we organize um, um, all kinds of meetings. That's why when we come to God's presence like this, we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things. So for that brother, you may need help. Seek help. Look for an anointed man of God, not just a counselor. Somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My name is Luke. My name is Luke. It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. Uh, I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And uh, you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursuer of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursue the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So, the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to. And um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven. Uh, yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that. In Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven and a coming new down earth. ahead. And, you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven and the new earth? And I didn't know what to really tell just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. 
Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or. I understand. I don't really. You see, we labor day and night, uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, I, I don't mean in any way, I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1. The very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens. Different planes. Paul himself gave us an example. He said he was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other dimensions. The psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. So we know that there are different planes. But there is heaven. Hallelujah. Are we together now? The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Not just the sky. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1, when Jesus was about to be taken, when he lifted to heaven, two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not there? Acts chapter 1. Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse Verse 10. Verse 10. I know that when you read from verse 9, let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation, the heaven of heavens. Is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven and, and um, there are people there right now are we together and we hope that one day we'll join them now what we need to explain is the fact that the bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come it is true that that very habitation of god will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and whole earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information 
that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate. Politely decline. You may look foolish. Don't say, no, I can't let this go like this. Let it go like that so that God will be glorified. Yes, my dear. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana Kadri. Thank you. My question is, sir, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God, and you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody. And said you'll marry a pastor, yes. and you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> I'm asking that. So, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying. And she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, we men of God have spoken to people. And there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all loved but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people i call people out by the spirit and i just keep quiet because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh. And to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may, is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? But let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you this sincerely. One thing I know about marriage, and we have discussed that, make reference to my message, um, challenging discussions on late marriage. I think we touched that area where the issue of God said overrides the word of God. The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us through his son, which he has appointed to be heir over all things. And we know that that son is the living logos, the word of God. And so whether it is Joshua Selman, I'm not telling you to doubt the word. By the grace of God, we press into the word of God to make sure that we bring accurate words. And there is a track record. You can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people. Some of them have come to pass. Some of them are already on the way. Praise the Lord. Now, um, no matter what it is, if a man of God gives you a prophetic word and after a season, 
you do not for instance let's use marriage i prophesy to this lady now and i tell her a pastor is coming and michael comes to her and let's assume michael is just a businessman you know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away and say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her god didn't lie are we together but sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check in fact sincerely speaking let me tell you it is very it is very praiseworthy to go back to god again we have seen instances in the bible where god spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again are we together an example is isaiah 38 when he spoke to isaiah to speak to hezekiah remember that scripture he came and told him hezekiah put your house in order you will not recover from this sickness you are going to die are we bible students so when i hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of god god sent isaiah again are we together to go back so there is a possibility it's not a doctrine but through scripture we see that there is a possibility um the alignment of man can make god say new things i'll give you an instance if this lady is your wife are we to um, example example if this lady is your wife i'm not showing you your wife if this lady is your wife of, of course let me just put a, a little word of blessing we are proud of our ladies and if i say it and god is is is, is directing you there there's nothing wrong ladies you should give me a happy meal tomorrow <laughs> are we together but now this is the example if this is your wife truly truly and she says i'm not doing do you think god is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience are we together now god will not put you to ransom the same way if god calls you into ministry and you say no will he force you will he kill you the same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him when you refuse he will not force you there's hellfire already to settle that issue so he will not force you please i want us to understand that the plans of god can change is his purposes that are eternal this is a revelation that would deliver many of us right now the plans of god can change god planned that you fly Ari to lagos and something happens god will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport the plans have changed but the destination is still lagos but when you sit down and say it must be Arik or it must be flight are we together now in scripture again and again for instance do you know it was never god's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them when you read in the bible it was his desire that he remains their king but the people out of anger and rebellion they say give us a king and god had to make prophet samuel to go and anoint saul the son of kish to become a king are we together now yes it was never even god's desire listen it was never god's desire for david for the tribe of david to be the lineage with which jesus will come he was supposed to be saul are we together but saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity remember when he went and he was off um, giving the offering by himself they asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet but he could not wait because the people were murmuring and being a king he was not a priest are we together because in ancient times they were kings priests and prophets they operated in different dimensions occasionally the priests were also the prophets like we have in the case of samuel he was both a priest and a prophet are we together now and so in that incidence um saul now start he made sacrifices and while he finished samuel just came and samuel told him you have done foolishly he said if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice god would have established your throne forever so it would not be the lion of the tribe of or, or the, the root of david it would now be the root of saul again we see that the first person god called in the bible was not abraham the first person god called in the bible was his father terah 
Jera was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling and say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Portacot, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions. And you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not neither will they understand he said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course so it is important for us to be good students of the word not religiously studying it but studying it with everything that we have hallelujah number two corporate fellowship is very important it's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth you can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. So it's very important. Corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening hallelujah and then number three ultimately it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the holy spirit worship team sang the song beautifully we're going to sing that song again and and then we'll sing that song that came i can't even remember what we sang but try to remember it worship team we'll sing those two songs again very beautifully the holy spirit this place is called koinonia is our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom the bible says ride prosperously because of truth right you will only prevail by the truth you know not the truth that is available the truth you know it can be available but if you do not know it you will still die there are still people going to hell whereas the price for our sin has been paid for hallelujah we are going to pray um, just a few minutes and we'll be done we're going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately very passionately to open up our spirits to open up our spirits very very important while seated just pray we're going to stand up but then I want us to pray while seated and talk to the Lord some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things if you were to be asked some of these questions, many of us see that this is like a, a test. 
those outside make sure you are praying at the back there outside at the window make sure you are participating in the prayer the lord is with you right where you are make sure you are praying and say lord please deliver me from spiritual ignorance deliver me from ignorance grant me access to the word grant me access to the word deliver me from spiritual ignorance Lord, I want to be furnished, grounded in the truth. The Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. That they, the saints now equipped, will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all will come into the fullness of the the, the measure of the stature of Christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine lift your voice and pray and say Lord in this time and age in these end times where there is a lot of error there is a lot of confusion I pray that I be delivered from spiritual ignorance lift your voice and pray deliver me oh God from ignorance open my eyes to access light in the spirit. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. Everyone, please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me 
for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy God. For your glory use me for your glory use me for your glory have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah i like us to pray any gift of the spirit any dimension that once walked in you but for some reason has stopped working. I like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this something has happened lift your voice and pray restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration of the gifts of the spirit restoration of the wisdom of the spirit restoration of passion passion for god restoration of passion restoration of hunger spiritual seriousness hunger for bible studies hunger for prayer hunger for fasting hunger for the house of god hunger to see his kingdom come Take your place. Take your place. Pray from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness, let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness. Don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life. Hallelujah. I just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point because like Samson, there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues. You receive certain things, maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation. A man of God laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities. But some of us, you did not know how to fan it to flame. There are some of us here, the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now, if you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels. But you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace, if you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month, but look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Ali Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies, this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. Shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming out to me. three and then we'll pray the third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men 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 
the ministry of men. Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectation be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation. The word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things. Then the word becomes flesh when men are introduced in your life. Men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life. Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say, such as in, is in heaven. He said, such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have. But you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight... You will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute. And declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside. Pray. Diligent the rewarder, the healer, the lifter.
I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he's doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you're about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave the seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, i like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the Spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the Spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now I declare by the spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare. That in the name of Jesus. 
at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils. I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now, be delivered now. I command closed doors be open closed doors be open right now be open Closed by the hand of darkness, I declare be open, be open now, be open now, be open now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, hey. showing me chains over people's heads I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now be loose now in the name of Jesus be loose by the authority of Jesus by the authority of Jesus by the authority of Jesus the Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years there is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. hallelujah right away I want to pray against barrenness I'm sensing the grace don't wait till you are married if there is anyone here by the spirit of God by whatever means your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven I declare right now I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people married or unmarried let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. 
I tell you the anointing of God is coming on people whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones I declare again womb be open now be open now be open now Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied. Like a chain around the feet of people. Right now I decree and declare. Every chain. Makatoska barakata holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now 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 hallelujah if you have any abdominal pain lay your hands right now lay your hands just on your stomach any kind of abdominal pain doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid doesn't matter whatever just lay your hands here right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now the anointing of the holy ghost is coming upon your stomach area and in the name of jesus let there be a miracle right now let there be a miracle right now I'm seeing a number in the realm of the spirit 21 and the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people and that grace is for direction you are at a point in your life where you are confused you honestly don't know what to do but right now I stretch my hands 21 I see it in the realm of the spirit right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction ending confusion receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now direction 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 in ministry direction in business direction geographic direction receive it in the name of Jesus I want to pray for speed I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare... I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time there is a lot to do who is Janet I'm hearing a name Janet 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 all those who are in front under the anointing here I command the devils that have oppressed you this is the house of God right now at the count of three release them release everything you have tied down one two three go go now every strange spirit Go now. Go now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Janet. I'm hearing a name, Janet. Hold on. Please don't, don't be rowdy. Just relax. Stand up, my dear. That lady on green, stand up. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing bring that person just this row I'm seeing a cloud just right here right now as I'm speaking the anointing of the spirit is coming on one person there please bring the person it's a lady bring her Janet I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ hi This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Ben Way State, Ben Way State, Ben Way State. I cause the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory. That is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh.
Agnes. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take our time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing, just like fire. Three families, three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes, who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes, your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the Spirit of the... There is no hiding place in the name of Jesus. There is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness. I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold that there. I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this rope. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare. Just don't worry. Leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this rope like this. This rope right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the spirit of the living God. That everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. I set you free, my dear, in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone. But there is a woman here, don't be embarrassed. You just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please? There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. 
don't be embarrassed huh? because that's the same way you will come here and testify listen God is not going to embarrass you for nothing are we together listen let me tell you this this is one big family and we're intelligent people we will never come and just embarrass someone like that if there's anything that looks embarrassing just know that these things um, are spiritual my dear that young lady go in come lift your hands God is not done with you yet huh this is this is you would have left this girl now she would have probably just gone like that uh, in the name of Jesus Christ I declare take what you put in her dream life let it live now take what you put inside her through the dream miscarriage please come please don't feel embarrassed this is a family did I pray for you did I pray for you it's all right if I prayed for you just go back my dear put your hand on your stomach in the name of Jesus I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit go and return with your child according to the time of life no more miscarriage whatsoever in the name of Jesus you will return with child according to the time of life in the name of Jesus Christ madam please place your hand in the name of Jesus return with child return with child in the name of Jesus there is someone here you are in ministry I've not done the impartation yet but I'm seeing an anointing come on you and this is for your ministry there is a level of expansion that you have been praying for and God is about to answer that prayer I stretch my hands I don't know where that person is but in the name that is above all names may that anointing like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus there's someone here God this night is giving you a ministry to teenagers an anointing is coming on you your ministry will be to teenagers I don't know where that person is but Lord I stretch my hands right now may that man to find the person in the name of Jesus I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy, and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? miscarriage are you married you're sure in the name of Jesus place your hand there I agree with you every plague of miscarriage goes now in the name of Jesus Christ according to the time of life return with your child in the name of Jesus Christ your sister where is she Abuja tell her that she was prayed for and she should respect a miracle in the name of Jesus I declare you're standing in for her but I declare the power of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession now I know that it's, it's a it's a grace we will all desire but there are four exact people four exact people some inside some outside lord i don't know where they are but that grace a dimension of the intercessory ministry capacity to travail by the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah why is she here Where are you from? Kaduna, how long have you been married? Last year. Last year? Yes, sir. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Yes, sir. 
because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Um, Where? I'm also in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from a good city. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Alliance Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams, huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them, but there are dreams that are oppressions, a lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down, your life will change. Amen. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you, please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it all right if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released... Let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? The other, sir. Come. Yes. 
Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why buy the life here? Who is sick? Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a goat. And it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. Yes, I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That everyone encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir. I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adam Awatu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I, don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man you will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a laundry. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. Yes, he's the presenting. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member, and yet he's doing. Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship, and just of a sudden. He changed. he changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody. Huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gate before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to wash him clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how speak anyone? <laughs>
revive this station in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you want a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. <laughs> That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female, when our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, Look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I saw Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. Yes. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. To. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But... The times that we are living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 
2005. How many years is that? 14 years. No child. Her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you? I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, now, I, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He's, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's staying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. It may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman, and think the husband is this, mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here the moment you start a relationship with a guy. He becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships, relationships, re loving and unloving, loving and unloving. Today you are in love, tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself. I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the God of heaven let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me, we're praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage. out of And, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming? Why is she coming out? The, the family is... 
she just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she, she, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesied by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name someone will run out under the anointing hold the person and bring the person out that will be the last prophecy the power of God is coming on someone it's not something you can control by the anointing you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit please when that happens bring the person I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now it's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse so, something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. 
all the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who have prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer, but particularly if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue and we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we're going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them and let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay. Okay, there is, there is overflow two B. Then there is overflow four. Please listen. This is overflow one. This is overflow two. There is overflow two B from this place right to the roadside, second equa down. Then there's overflow four, just from the gate of overflow three. Then we have overflow three in the main building. And then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to these requests. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time 
to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered we release it now in the name of Jesus Christ And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here as God is visiting you here every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus, And the king could not sleep in the night and he said bring me the chronicles and he saw there written what Mordecai did whoever must remember you for this request to be granted by the God of heaven we open the book of remembrance tonight Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here, we put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here, webbed in shame and reproach, it looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. 
I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed. In the name of Jesus, please believe. Let your don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you, and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters everything that should have happened and has not yet happened According to the program of God, you know you should have entered that level and you are not there. By prophecy, I push you to that level. By prophecy, I push you to that level. Listen. You see, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm not just speaking. I'm placing something upon your life. You may not see it, but you leave this place and watch what happens to you. Then you will see things turn around. Let me pray for you. The kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life. Please receive this one. In the name that is above all names, may that mantle like a cloak. Shakata pakatos. Ke preketos kaparuta. E prekete kotosho pakata. Kratosho tes kaparata. Take favor. Take favor. Carry favor. Carry favor. In the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. 
as you are lifting your hands may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits anyone in ministry here i declare over you go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministration let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of jesus we're rounding up let's pray over our finances this issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees bringing many families to their knees distracting people the time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money what to eat what to wear house rent building projects it is not the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ Ebenezer the helper of men I declare this month even beginning from today receive strange financial help receive strange financial help in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you strange financial help everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job listen there are jobs that don't have honor they are time wasters they are devourers i pray for you the kind of job that represents dignity that will honor you and help you to build your home well may the god of heaven give you such a job let me pray for your spiritual life if you have cars you have houses and your spiritual life is not on fire you are not doing well the first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life that your prayer life fire word life fire fellowship with the spirit fire no room for up today down tomorrow i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer life 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 every lukewarmness slumber gluttony these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency i declare in the name of jesus receive victory over them the grace that can keep a man in the presence of god the, the staying power that you can stay with the world stay in prayer not rushing and rush out and one power god is not a magician i pray for you the unction to stay receive it in the name of jesus every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated there are some of you now listen there are levels of graces you should have left sincerely there are dimensions of power there are haziness certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception there is a level of authority there is an office you should be sitting on now but it's not yet there i pray for you the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now listen everything in your life that has refused to grow god gave you a ministry that has refused to grow no membership nobody is placing a demand on your grace god gave you a business it has refused to grow no increase no impact anything that is alive grows whatever has stopped growth in your life i bring that thing to an end now yeah. 
Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted at noonday the spirit of death if there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life or your loved ones or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline i declare let death lose its grip over you now Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly darling. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now.
quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing, honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me sincerely. Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven the Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Um, I, I know I welcome everybody. We are going to welcome the first timers now, but particularly I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There yeah, are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place. And um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. Is by no way belittling you. Every we believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones, and so I just wanted to to do that honor. And I think I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just quizzed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far, um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches they have different ways of receiving people but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, overflow one, overflow two, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see... It's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. Are we together? Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you, and I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far within and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays um, when there's a fixed time. But I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. Thank you for taking the time. And um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to them and bless them.
We love you and we are praying for you. From the depth of our hearts, we are blessing you. Blessing your ministries, blessing your businesses, blessing your career, blessing your family. We want to see the hand of God upon your life. We want to see you loving the Lord like never before. We want to see you growing in the things of God. We want to see you walking in purpose and destiny. We want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord reveal himself to you. The Lord bring you into a dimension of intimacy. The Lord place.